Okay guys, how do I train my students for them to become good positional players? How do I train them for them to get really good at strategy? Before we get into it, I wanted to show you an entire game, but let me tell you two things. Number one, if you take a look at this position in front of you and you know exactly what to do, if you know the next move, I'm going to tell you in a moment, if you get it right, then by all means, you don't need to continue with this lesson. Now, if you take a look at this other position and you don't know what your strategic plan is, then you need to go back to other lessons we've had on this topic. Lesson number 52, lesson number 121, and that's exactly how you get to become a really strong strategic positional player. Just like you guys train tactics, like you do 100 forks, 100 pins, and then you get really good at it. Well, the same thing with strategic positional patterns. You have to keep reinforcing them until they become second nature. So let me go back to the very first position because again, if you know the plan, if you already know the move, don't even bother continuing with this video. But basically in this position in front of you, the first thing that has to come to mind is that the black pieces have a lot of weaknesses on the dark squares. Notice that the E pawn is pushed, the C pawn is pushed, and more importantly, the dark square bishop is removed. So immediately we know we need to capitalize on that. So if I already have a queen putting pressure on that, the king can not castle. And of course I have a better position to put pressure on attack. The last thing that I wanna do is simplify the game. I need pieces to continue to put pressure, but more specifically, I need to keep my queen on the board. The queen is the one controlling all of this diagonal, preventing the king from castling. So by process of elimination, we eliminate one of our candidate moves. Of course, I don't want to do that, even though we get them double pawns by doing so. Now the right move and the move that we're looking for here, the move that they did in the game, and I'm going to show you the entire game, but the move that they did guys was actually queen a3 and if you didn't think about it now when you see it it's going to start making sense number one i keep pieces on the board like i said number two i continue to control that diagonal specifically that square on d6 and of course it comes with a bonus of preventing the king from castling. So that king is going to stay in the center for a little bit longer and it's going to give us enough time to attack the king. Now, this is going to seem a little bit weird, but instead of going back and showing you the entire game, I'm going to continue from here until the end and then we do it backwards. Let's see how it goes. And the main reason why I want to show you the entire game is for you to see, number one, how those squares became weak and number two, how the black pieces got rid of the bishop. And that was one of the main, the main problems. And we have talked so much about this, but anyhow, here after queen a3, we have bishop d7, of course, at least developing the bishop and of course there's not much more they could do they cannot even castle so for us as the white pieces here if we're playing this game i need to remember my focus is that d6 square so what do i want to do well i want to place my knight on d6 and notice that i'm saying this because even if you know that's the plan many of us get ahead of ourselves and we just rush do uh do things prematurely and we end up blowing it so even though my knight belongs on d6 i wanted to get there i know that it is not possible now so what do i do in that case well i need to realize my opponent is under a lot of pressure and this is something that i wanted to say sometimes i'm playing in a tournament i stand up from the table and i walk around to take a look at the position from my opponent's perspective and if you're doing if you do that in a game like this you're going to realize that your opponent is uncomfortable they know what's coming and they cannot do much about it so my opponent is under pressure they have nothing on me there's no counter play no attack on my king so i do have time so instead of getting ahead of myself i'm going to continue to develop my pieces this bishop i could go to g5 with the idea of eliminating the knight and then going to e4 or we could do what they did in this game which is developing the bishop at the expense of the queen and now you could see how queen a3 also helps with protecting the pawn on b2 so we have queen to c7 and now of course that queen is on the same i open file again no need to rush i'm going to continue to improve my pieces so this rook that is doing nothing i bring it i bring it to the same file of the queen and i'm even threatening to do b4 if they take in passant there's a discovery attack coming out after that move and even though you don't know exactly where you know there has to be something at that point so after rook c, uh, a to c1 we got knight to g4 going after the bishop now the next move should be pretty easy for you guys to come up with but still take your time double check look at the different options that you have now if you thought of the move bishop f4 comes to mind we're doing it we're moving the bishop out of trouble at the expense of the queen i hope that you also considered what the black pieces could do of course they could move the queen in this game 
they went queen b6 but they also could do pawn to e5 and you guys have to consider that so if bishop f4 if they do pawn to e5 there are two ways to capitalize on the dark squares mainly that d6 this is going to be the one that we really want to put pressure on so you could do easily 94 followed by 96 and then the king cannot get it onto that diagonal. And if they go to the eight, we get knight f7 with a very powerful fork. Now, the other way to that we could do it is knight to d5. Notice that the pawn moved. Every time we move a pawn, a weakness is created. So by doing e5, we got knight d5 putting pressure on the queen. When the queen moves, then queen d6, you see the same d6 square is used by the white pieces. And from here, we're ready to do knight c7. We're still attacking e5. This is just too much for the black pieces to hold. Now, in the actual game, they went after bishop f4, they went queen b6, and now the next move, if you understand what this position is all about, the next move should be very easy to come up with. Knight e4 with the idea of going to d6. So, of course, the black pieces don't have much to do, so they went bishop c6. By now, we cannot delay it anymore, we cannot miss this opportunity, so the knight goes to d6, check. Same thing, the king needs to get on the open d file. And now, what move would you do next, guys? If you didn't pause the video, if you played fast, and you said rook f to d1, well, think twice, because f2 could be trouble. So instead, we got rook c to d1, getting ready for a discovered check. The king cannot go here again. It cannot go, it shouldn't go to c7 because of another discovered check. It cannot go to c8 or e8 because of the knight. So this is a very bad position already. So we have bishop d5 played, bishop takes, pawn takes, and finally rook d5 and the black pieces resigned. Now guys, this is a very good position. If you activate the engine, it's gonna say the white pieces are winning by 13.9. This is a lot. So feel free to take this position and play it against the engine. I'm going to leave the PGN to this position in the, in the description just for you to give it a try and let me know in the comments how it went. Now, if this is enough for you, if you need all of these guys, don't bother to continue with the lesson. But what I wanted to do next, I wanted to show you the game from the very beginning just for you to see how they went from the opening to the middle game and they were able to capitalize on something as as simple as a weak square so we have this opening we covered it on lesson 123 124 the lazy catalan notice that they're not doing c4 and actually <laughs> to be fair i guess this could be called uh the indian game or something like that so anyway c5 bishop g2 knight c6 and then castle this is something that those of you who have been friends of the channel for a long time you know i like this kind of position so c takes d4 not a big deal knight takes d4 and then we got pawn to d5 now at this very moment feel free to show this position actually this position guys to any of your friends anyone you know if you want to know how good they are when it comes to positional chess to strategy and so on they should be able to tell you how important the dark square bishop is now for the black pieces the moment this pawn is pushed the moment the c pawn is pushed d6 is a very weak square now after they do d5 of course don't forget a weakness it's not a problem unless it could be taken advantage of. Right now, it's hard for the white pieces to capitalize on it. But if the D file opens, then that's going to be a different story because we could put pressure directly on D6, exactly like we saw on lesson 121. So anyhow, after D5, we have pawn to C4. This to me is very familiar because I play the Grunfeld defense and you see the same ideas here. And that's why I keep telling you guys, always try to review master games regardless of the openings that you play. Ideas from the Grunfeld, which you typically play as black, you could utilize it here. For example, in this game, they went queen b6, but if they had done something like e5, you could do knight takes e6, b takes e6, and then start putting pressure on d5 with knight c3. Of course, d4 cannot happen because we take on c6, and you can see these hyper-modern ideas in place. We let the, our opponent have a very nice center, only because we want to put pressure on it uh, with our pieces, you see? So that's, that's the idea. But anyhow, going back to what happened in the game, instead of e5, we got queen b6, and now you have this very interesting move. We got knight b5. Look at that. The knight is immediately paying attention to that square on d6, the square on c7, but more importantly, d6, which is a weak square. If they take on c4 at some point, already we're going to have the knight, but also the queen putting pressure on it. And guess what? That's exactly what happened in this game. D takes e4, and we already know as the white pieces, this is going to be for us. The black pieces should know that this bishop now becomes more and more important. They should never let go of that bishop. Some of you might be thinking, you know what? What if we just kick the knight 
out. I don't like it. Well, bishop e3 is coming to town. So instead of a6, of course, we have d takes e4. And now we cannot drop the knight. There's no need to do knight d6 so quickly. So knight b to c3, continue to develop our pieces. Then we got bishop c5. Again, we're ready. Now that the knight is defended, we're ready to do bishop e3. So bishop c5 happens first. And now, of course, we got knight to d6. Just like that, guys. Look, I'm sorry to go back again and, and being back and forth. But notice how from the moment they did e6 and then c5, this becomes weaker. And then a few moves later, we're just laser focused on that d6 square. So knight goes to b5, putting pressure on d6. Then they open the file. Now it's the knight and the queen. And of course, without getting ahead of ourselves, we end up doing knight to d6. So this is the position that I showed you before. If this didn't come to mind, you gotta go back lesson 52. We reinforced it on many other lessons, but more specifically 121. Now we are reinforcing it one more time and we're going to continue to do so. This has to become second nature for us. You could see how the game was ended without any crazy tactics, just pure technique by the white pieces. So anyways, knight d6, of course they have to take. By the way, they don't have to take, sorry about that. Here, I think the better move, guys, instead of taking, was to do king e7. It is very important that we do not give this bishop up. We need to have a piece, a bishop that controls our dark squares. So this is probably a better option. Maybe the rook could come over later, even though after knight c4, the, black, the white pieces are still better. But I think it's easier to play this than what actually happened in the game. So the black pieces decided to take. Many people, including myself, will probably take on d6. And then after knight a5, this is the really difficult move to find. Many of us think of queen takes b6 or bringing the rook over to defend or simply going back. But the powerful move, if you understand what this is all about, is queen a3. And now the game is pretty much lost strategically. So bishop d7. Everything is going to be about developing our pieces quickly and, of course, capitalizing on that weakness. Guys, bishop e3 is important. We got to develop our pieces. You don't want to be attacking, putting pressure and then say, oh, I need to improve my pieces. No, remember that the rook was ready to come to d1. That's important. So development. Now, rook c1, then bishop e4. Remember, if the pawn moves, a new weakness for our knight to jump on. So queen b6. 94, we know where we're going. This should be easy to come up with. And then 96, rook goes to the open file, bishop d5. And then our fianchetto bishop came on to finish the game in style. That's it. At this point, the black piece is resigned. I invite you to finish it against the engine. And let me know in the comments how it went. With that said, I'll see you guys in lesson 133.